What do you do when you can't stop the storm? Come on now. Amen. Somebody gonna like this one right here. What do you do, Tyrone, when you can't stop the storm? Let's go to 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And trust me, I'm biblical on this. I know, you, I know we can stop the storm or we can speak to the storm, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you this right here. There's some storms you ain't going to be able to stop. And I'm not just talking about physical storms. I'm talking about there's some storms in our lives. You can pray, you can fast, you can run, but I promise you that storm is going to keep coming for you. Why? Because you cannot stop every storm. So somebody say, I'm not going to stop every storm. Come on, get it in your spirit. You're not going to stop every storm. Why, Pastor? Because it's not God's will for you to stop every storm. If you stop every storm, how do you exercise your faith in the storm? If we stop every storm, we don't have to have faith. Some things you got to go through so you know what you're working with. There's some folks in here today, you're saved not because everything went well. You're saved because there have been a few times in your life where the bottom fell out. But you hung in there. You kept on praying. You kept on believing. And even though God didn't fix it when you wanted him to or the way you wanted him to, you look back over your life and you realize he really was there all along. Everybody that talks about Job oftentimes preaches it. And don't, don't get mad at me, but they preach it from an ignorant perspective. Again, ignorant is not stupid. It just means you don't know. And oftentimes we repeat, hand me down God garbage and knowledge. And when people talk about Job, people say Job went through what he went through because the devil asked God for permission and God allowed it to happen. That's not why Job went through what he went through. Don't say, you ain't got to say nothing. I'm here to teach you. But Pastor, I, we read in the Bible where the devil asked God and God told the devil, yes, but that's not the reason why Job went through what he went through. Job tells us why he went through what he went through. We just hadn't paid attention to Job. I would rather listen to the man who know why he went through what he went through than somebody preaching something they heard somebody else preach. Let me educate you. Job confessed in Job 3 and 25. The thing, preach Job, which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Why should I be clapping? Because Job just liberated the whole church. Job says you don't need to think that just because the devil asks can he do something to you that God's going to all willy-nilly give him permission. You see how we painted God? That God just sitting up and let the devil do whatever he want to do. That's not how it works. God says the only reason why Job got attacked, the only reason why I told the devil yes, don't miss this, is because I wanted to work that fear out of his heart. Come on, somebody. Okay, let, listen, I used to be slow too, so let me slow it down. Job said, the thing I fear the most. See, the thing you're afraid of is looking for you. Good God Almighty. That's why you can't fear being broke. You can't fear divorce. You can't fear losing your job. You can't fear not being liked. Because the thing you fear, it's going to happen to you. Job said again, the thing which I greatly fear, it has come upon me. He didn't say God did it. He didn't say the devil did it. Job was sitting there. Don't miss this. Job was afraid of losing his kids. And he lost his kids. Job had plenty of money. I got plenty of money. I got plenty. Yeah, Job had plenty of money. Guess what? Job lost his plenty of money. Job had a fear of his wife cursing him and encouraging him to die. And what did his wife do? Curse God and told Job to go ahead and die. See, we look at the Bible and think, oh, God just let the devil do whatever he wanted to do. No, God's going to work that fear out of you one way or another. Come on, somebody. This is why I'm not afraid of failure. If you're afraid of failure, guess what? You set yourself up to fail. Help them, Holy Ghost. If you got a mindset, all I do is win, I ain't going to fail. Even if it don't work out, it works together for my good. That type of thinking makes you a winner in every situation. But you sit around thinking, I'm not going to make it. It's going to be rough. This storm's going to find me. You keep on thinking that. That thing going to come right to wherever you are. Why? Because your fear is attracting what you are afraid of. Give God praise if you got it. Man, somebody better get this today. Ask yourself, what am I afraid of? 
Now watch this, I promise you, whatever you're afraid of, you keep having instances and seasons where you have to deal with it over and over again. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Amen. How can you tell me this? Because I know the word of God. Put this on the I, screen, I think I got it in the slide. Say the thing you fear the most has no power. Help of Holy Ghost. Somebody say the thing you fear the most has no power. It's your fear that gives your fears their powers. Say fear attracts the predator like blood attracts sharks. You go swimming in the ocean and you got a cut on your hand. Okay, how good you swim. It's only a matter of minutes before the sharks are gonna find you. Why are they finding you? Not because they see you. See, you think the devil keep finding you because he see you? Help him, Holy Ghost. The devil keeps finding you because he smell you. First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, don't miss this, the devil walks about like pretending to be, impersonating a roaring lion. Here, here's the caveat right here. Seeking whom he may. May is what? A word of permission. So the devil can't devour just anybody that he wants to devour, number one. Hold this, Herman. What's the determining factor that dictates whether or not the devil can devour you and devour me? Fear. Fear gives him permission to attack us because we don't smell like faith. 